Now, Andrew, it looks like you have a question here. He's saying, what do you recommend for a small B2B company? How do you uh, let's scroll up here? Do, do, do. How do you prioritize social media relationship management? That's a really good question. So the use case that I would use to figure that out, that's going to be number number two there. That's social marketing insights. What I would do is I would use an influence marker in your social CRM system, maybe a scale of one to three, one to five, something like that, and and denotate how influential the customer is. Um, there's influence services out there like Clout, but uh, you know. I think you might want to do something a little more multifaceted than that. My opinion of cloud as, as a, a marker of influence is a little bit mixed. It's like, it's really fun. I kind of see it for what it is, which is advertising on our not I don't think it's exactly a valid measure of influence any longer, unfortunately. So that's, that's how I would take that one. Any other um, ones as far as I think Tom's asking a question about monitoring and me measuring social media? Oh, i got to say awareness. It's a cinch. I mean, I, I was a customer myself from 2007 to 2008, 2008 so it's, I just think it's easy to use. It's good stuff. Okay, cool. You guys ready to go into the sales use cases and then wrap up? We just got about 15 minutes to go. Let me just see if I got any other questions here on Twitter. Oh, sorry, Katie. I didn't realize that, that the Celtics aren't playing there right now. I forgot. <laughs> Just a, just a few more weeks. Sit tight. Why don't you, you know what, Katie, read my book, and, and by the time you're finished with that thing, it'll be basketball season. <laughs> if you can't, please, turn to Chapter 14. No, All right, so let, now let's, let's get into the last piece, which is our sales use cases. Sal, you want to kick us to uh, slide 17? Sure. All right. And by the way, this stuff's all kind of in the beginning of my book, Chapters uh, uh, 5 and 6. So the sales use cases, social sales insights. Wow, this is a so, so important one. This is all about if you're a salesperson. So, Sal, can you put everybody's hands down? Sure. If I Raise can. your hand if you're in sales and you've gone on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter to find a current customer. Raise your hand if you've done that. You are the smarty pants salespeople on the call. Oleta, Luciano, Leslie, you guys are awesome. Stuart, Beth, David, you rock. Keep doing this. The only recommendation I would give you on top of what you're already doing is try and automate it. Um, you can do this by doing what's called social sales insights. And that means it's figuring out where your customers hang out online. The only way to do this is by using good software for mediating your customers' data and then putting it inside your CRM system. So keep doing what you're doing, but I would say crank it up a notch if you can and actually keep records of it all. So I keep records of this stuff all the time. Like Sal is a partner of mine, but he's also a client of mine. I have Sal's Twitter. I have Sal's uh, LinkedIn page marked in my CRM system. So this one, <coughs> um, Oracle's uh, VP of CRM, this guy Mark Wollen, pretty important dude in the CRM world, he said that this one is going to be the biggest one in terms of total dollar generated. So if I had to say which one is the most important for winning deals, this is it, social sales. Advice. And it's uh, a lot of people are using it right now. I had a, a client in my office this morning, a guy who works in finance. He just joined six or seven new LinkedIn groups. Why? Because that's where his customers hang out. That's where he's getting new information from. Okay, the next one is rapid social sales response. This is really useful for B2C companies. So put your hands, Sal, can you put down the hands of everybody who's got their hands up right now? Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if you work for a B2C company, raise your hand. I want to see who, who we have from B2C on the call. I think Loretta. Amex, what's up, Bleaker from Amex? Good company. Have a lot of business there. Awesome. Okay, so we got a bunch of B2C people. I see Katie. I see uh, Ford. Scott from Ford. What's up, Ford? First car I had. First car I learned to drive on. So, and Sue from Verizon. So these are some really cool B2C companies around the call. So here's how they're doing rapid social sales response. What they're doing is they're scanning the social web for customers who may be interested in that. And these are people talking about problems, maybe even problems with their competitors. Sal, did you hear that story maybe a year ago for somebody who was, like, waiting in line to check in at a hotel? I think it was for a consumer electronics show. <clears throat> and they, something like the reservation got canceled, and the Twitter person or the social media person at the hotel down the street actually tweeted them and said, hey, don't worry about it. Come on over. We're across the street. We'll, we'll set you up with it. Yeah, yeah yes, I have. Actually, heard, a, heard a couple stories like that, actually. Yeah, if that ain't social sales response, man, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So that that is just just awesome. So that that's that's the use case there, and this is near the tipping point, meaning that companies are using it and making money off it. Okay, next one, number nine, 
I'd say this one's one of the most low key of the sales ones, and this was used successfully by ShareBuilder 401k. Um, this is all about successfully creating leads from the social web. And the way you do this is by doing darn good content marketing. And I think, Sal, your, your company has a bunch of documents on how to do this stuff, right? Yes, we do. A lot of white papers. Yep. A lot of white papers there, and I got a bunch of them. If you log into the Mets customer community, you can download a bunch from me. So we can teach you how to do that part. <laughs> it may seem a little labor-intensive at first, but you'll notice 90 days after you start doing this type of content marketing, you're going to be getting leads from LinkedIn, from Twitter, from Facebook, and then you just need to set up a little connection between, say, your awareness and your sales force or whatever your customer relationship management software is and your social media software. So that way, when you get a lead, it pops it right into your CRM software and the marketing team or the sales team can pick up the phone and say, hey, what's going on? You tweeted us 78 times this week. Maybe we should chat. Com you know, conversations like that will pop up. <clears throat> All right. And now we're going to get into the very bottom. These are the funky ones. Uh, number 10 is super funky. This is direct or distributed social commerce. So if you want to see some direct social commerce, I'm going to show it to you. Go to Facebook. You just pull up your Facebook, and I'll send you guys this name. I'm just pulling up Delta Airlines. It's an airline I fly whenever I go to Atlanta. And I'm going to go to the Delta ticket counter. This, my friends, is direct social commerce. They are selling freaking plane tickets on Facebook. They're not selling them on Delta.com or Travelocity. They're literally selling them on the social web. That is direct social commerce. Then there's distributed social commerce. That's when you sell it by widget, meaning it's almost like you're selling something in a little advertising. That's possible to do, too. But that link I just popped in there, you can literally go on there and buy a plane ticket without leaving Facebook. Wow. Crazy. So then, the last two, social demand generation. <clears throat> So that's very similar. Nine, number nine and number 11 are, are pretty darn similar. So social demand generation, the, the difference here is, is really that when you're doing social demand generation, <clears throat> the idea is not just to generate a lead. Number 11 is a little broader than number nine. So nine is you're just trying to get leads, and you're possibly trying to get people who are not leads yet but might become them in the future. So it's just sort of another flavor of content marketing. Some people would almost say, that number 11 really belongs in the marketing column. I think you can put it in either one. The last one is a trick. Um, the last one is called dynamic social supply reallocation. Some people would even put this in the operations category. Here's how it works. Let's say Westfield Mall in San Francisco is thinking of opening at 9 in the morning the day after Thanksgiving. But the person who handles the social media for Westfield Mall goes on Twitter and sees an amazing conversational volume the day before Thanksgiving Day. They could decide to open the mall two hours early as a result of that. That said, the store in the mall, say like Abercrombie and Fitch, may notice that in a certain geographic area on the social web, you're seeing a ton of conversation about one kind of thing, say blue sweaters. But they have a truck of blue sweaters that are headed to New York when they should be headed to Pittsburgh. They can actually dynamically reallocate the supply of stuff to put it, you know, where it really needs to go to match the demand. So what this does is it cuts down on excess inventory and it makes things sell better and sell faster because they're put in the right place because they're listening to the social web. 